just to change the subject. Just play my bloody record. Which well, well, that's do. what I want to get to. But <laughs> the things that that sort of that that sparked a relationship with you and why we we got on the air together was we started talking about music. So, yeah. what do you think of the music scene today? I think it's fantastic. I mean, there's so much good stuff. Um, there's so there's fifty thousand times more nonsense you have to wade through. <laughs> Um, you talk about music and I tend to talk about rock and roll because, and I know for a fact you agree with me because we've talked endlessly and at length about music effortlessly. So what rock and roll uniquely was in music was an idea. It was an attitude exemplified gloriously by Elvis or Little Richard, but specifically for the world because he was white and beautiful and young, Elvis. Um, but the greatest rock and roll lyric, to my mind, is a wop bop a lop bop a lop bam boom It says nothing, but it sounds like everything. Sure it does. And uh, it's just this rage, this inarticulate scream of frustration by this fabulous showman saying, 1955, I'm gay, I'm black, f*** off, you know, <laughs> and I want in, you know. Well, Bob, I'll tell you what I've profited greatly because there's a lot of music discussion goes on now, especially on Facebook and Twitter, you know, and you can connect with a lot more people about it. And they talk about the decades of music and I've, I've done this thing, well, I don't agree with you about the 60s or 70s because it started in 55 and my take on the decades, I know that we talk about the 60s, but to me it's 55 to 65 to 75 to 85. And if you look at it like that, the eras of music do have a kind of balance that I think, because 65 to 75, I would pick, was an amazing explosion of technology, creativity, collaboration, probably the best creativity that I remember since, uh, since I, the I would rock. dispute it. I mean, where I do think there's a continuity is in the, the sense of this, long, this golden thread of rock and roll. So you get Elvis, you get Lennon, Dylan, Jagger, Townsend, Johnny Rotten, there's no difference. So this attitude thing needs to be present. Rock and roll needs... So a, is, is that is that attitude around today? Well, rock and roll needs a context in which to exist. Um, and uh, certainly that context exists today. Not in Australia, which is through the roof economically, but everyone feels rather like the continent itself, that you're on the edge of something, always on the edge of a precipice. Here's this great desert pushing you all into the sea. And I think you kind of feel like that about the economy, like what's this developmental boom? You know, it springs out of your commodities exports, which depend on China. And if that goes bust, Jesus, where are we? You know, <laughs> so you're clinging to the edge of this economic <laughs> desert as well, but doing well on it like you are, you know. Thing. So how far can it go? So there's a context in which this happens here. And uh, in England, of course, it's existential. The economy's bottomed out. Uh, if you live in London, it's less... You don't get that sense. But outside, I was touring England all through, up to last Christmas, and I'll be I'm there again in three weeks. Um, it's awful out in the, you know, the cities. And uh, that's precisely the type of place, it's a terrible thing to say, that rock and roll springs mm, out of. Yeah. So uh, my lot came out of 75, 76, where there was a zero economy and politics were useless. So you... Music wasn't doing that anymore. Music was your your thing about technology. Music was Rick Wakeman and Yes, or, you know, the Stones even are betrayed by, you know, their bloody mansion houses and the length of their limos and the height of their platforms, their stupid bouffant hairdos, you know. <laughs> and along comes these kids that go, what? You know, what are you on about? Give me a job. And so you needed somebody very smart and to the point like John Lydon you know, who said everything before now. Year zero doesn't begin now. Year zero is us. It's us. And that's what's great about rock and roll. Year zero is whenever that next thing comes along that channels all that energy into an attitude. So the Pistols just said everything before us was rubbish. This incredibly brutal but beautiful nihilism. And they then go and prove it by making this fantastic album one record perfect and then they this comet streaks across the sky scaring the shit out of everyone and then crashes wonderfully to go wow i saw that it was great and then others put a more coherent form in it the clash make it into sort of old-fashioned politics which 
didn't read Peel. And then there was a bunch of others in my era. Maybe how many of us, eight or nine or ten. So does that context exist now? Yes, absolutely. Where's the sound? It isn't in what you're playing. And no. it isn't in what they want to hear that listen to this stage, because they want to hear what you play. And so, a lot of it comes from television nowadays. Well, it does, but, you know, that's great TV, things like, I don't know what you call it here, but the pop idol stuff yeah. or the X Factor thing or Australia's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have these shows. Yeah, but we do. Yeah, but, you know, that's fantastic television. You can't confuse the two. It's brilliant entertainment. But, it, but it's dictating the programming to radio. That's your problem. You should, you should resist it. And uh, it, it dictates it because the public see that and think that's great. But do they? So let me go into that's that. Exactly. Oh, good, yeah, that's what, what I think what too. The, what this stuff does is it produces fantastic people with voices who would never yeah. get a chance. Yeah. And, you know, they crop up and they're but good the dancers. But the creativity's not there. Are, are the thing. No, so where are the writers? Yeah. It's only rarely... Do you get a great voice that's an artist? Frank Sinatra, you know, Elvis. They take a song that you or I have written and they invest it with a psychology that wasn't there, that gives it great meaning. So, That's All Right, Mama. Who who wrote That's All Right? Uh, Big Boy Crudup wrote That's All Right, Mama. That's All Right, Mama. Well, Elvis did it. That's All Right. Suddenly Elvis goes, it's just shout, you know. It's sexual, it's... You know, bang. So Frank can take a song, Frank Sinatra, and suddenly there's whole other resonances going on in your head. You know, it's it's really an art. And those people on X Factor or whatever, presumably one will come along that everyone will go, wow. But other than that, they just pop up to the charts for the moment they're number one and they're gone again in general. But good luck to them.